we learn from this is that we cannot answer the question of whether or not we can kill something unless we know what that something is. And this is the most important fundamental question that must be resolved before we can attempt to answer the question of whether or not abortion is moral. Uh, you said the, it is a human embryo. Are, are, you, are you implying that it's not a person, but it's human? I'm using biological terms. So I don't think that a human embryo is a person in the sense of a living, breathing, walking, thinking, sentient, human being. There's a difference between a baby and an embryo is what I'm saying, well, biologically. Oh, absolutely, but they're still persons. You said that they're not living, breathing, walking. Uh, well, they are living, they are breathing, so perhaps not walking. So by that line of logic, would it not be okay then to go up to a person who confines a wheelchair or a handicap and kill them as long as they're not walking? I'm not even going to answer that. But that's, that's where you're... That's, that's where you're, That's what you said. It's not my, I mean, I agree, but that's not my argument. Okay. I think we have a moral responsibility to feed, care, and clothe the people who are here, the children who are here. You, you said that we have a moral obligation to feed, care, and clothe people that are already here, correct? Where is the unborn if not here? And why don't we have a moral obligation to feed, care, and clothe them? Not every pregnancy results in a birth. Um, my question to you in response is... But, but, uh, but my question was, well, well, where are they? Let me, let me finish it. And, you know, you, you brought up the, you know, we, the false equivalency of having an abortion ending a pregnancy is the same as, you know, killing a two-month-old baby or a person in a wheelchair or... Why is that false? Because it's not the same. So, um, you, I still want to know your answer you said that the unborn and a two-month-old baby, there is just not the same issue when you're coming killing them. I asked you why you said it's just not. Do you have any scientific evidence or philosophical evidence for this other than just a mere assertion that it's not? Well, I have studied human and embryological development. I didn't just take a textbook out of context and quote it. I actually know what embryological development is. I've studied the science of pregnancy and childbirth. So yeah, I know the difference between a two-month-old baby and a six-week-old embryo. Okay, well, well I'm asking you to like me here. Not just tell me it's different. <laughs> so a six-week-old embryo is not a fully formed human being. But, well, it's a whole human being, but not fully. I mean, it, a lot of people here aren't fully formed yet. I, I, I don't want to get into a science discussion. Neither one of us are medical professionals. I mean, the male's brain doesn't stop growing until 25. So <laughs> I think, yes, there's a difference. Oh, that's my answer. There's a, a fundamental difference there for me. And that's my that's my opinion. Yeah, it's based on scientific facts. I need to know why. I just, I've said it. Here's why. So I would really Wait, like for us to like an not get into the nitty gritty. So my question is like, then why is it okay in our society to have the death penalty? Why do we condone war? And why do we live in a country where people are forced, don't have the option of health care that is affordable and accessible to them? And people in Texas, in the United States are dying of preventable and treatable diseases because they can't afford health care. Like, how is that not morally wrong? Uh, I never said it was. Uh, you have to ask people who made those laws. Well, I think that abortion restrictions are bad policy making um, because of the negative impact that it has on people. And people I, include the unborn. Yes, because healthy pregnancies are important to having healthy children. When you think you've heard it all, you're going to hear something else. And I would like to see everyone have every option available to them, all the resources available to them, to have a healthy pregnancy, and to have a healthy birth, and to have a healthy postpartum. How is and <laughs> because if someone is not ready to be pregnant, if they're not able to be pregnant, 
they shouldn't be forced to be pregnant because you're looking at potential worse outcomes for that pregnancy and for postpartum. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's not about deciding for other people about whether or not they, should, they can have an abortion or should have an abortion. So once a person has made a decision to have an abortion, I don't want them to have to walk through a line of protesters. I don't want them to have to feel shame and stigma. I don't want someone to go and put a guilt trip on them because they made a decision that's best for them. Because it's not my place to judge, and it shouldn't be anyone else's place to judge. So I have a hypothetical scenario for you. You're saying that anti-abortion laws are bad. So I'm assuming that we should respect a woman's decision to have an abortion, whatever that decision may be, correct? Okay, if a woman comes up to you, let's hypothetically say that there was technology that was available that could tell you what, not just the gender of your baby, but maybe even your baby's sexual preferences. And what if they, uh, someone of some religion says, I just discovered that my baby is going to be more gay and I don't want to be a baby. Would you be okay with that decision so forth? Because if you are, then you're okay with killing homosexual people for people's preferences. If you're not, then you're going against a woman's choice, which by your standards should be respected no matter what. Well, that technology doesn't exist. So. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> and if it didn't exist, let's say she believed it. Let's say that she was lied to, regardless of whether this is not this is her, this is her position, this is her choice. Are you for choice in this situation? You know, honestly, in that type of situation, I would engage that person in further conversation. Um, continue that conversation or have a series of conversations about that. I mean, it's, 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 you're trying to paint this as black and white. So you're telling me you would not respect their decision, you try to convince them? I would help, I would engage them in conversation about that. Because yes, I would, I would personally have, take issue with that, but I would not just say yes or no to that person, I would talk to them further and engage them in conversation. I'm just gonna interject a question to kind of alleviate some of the tension. <laughs> it's about fairness. No one should be denied the health care that they seek because of their zip code or because of what's in their bank account. I want mothers to be healthy. I want children to be healthy. You said you wouldn't deny someone health care by their zip code or bank account and that children need to be healthy. So. The unborn does not have a zip code, but it definitely has a location, does not have a bank account, so why discriminate against the unborn when it comes to their health? Well, <laughs> well um, I shouldn't have been able to